Hello my soccer universe and yeah, the review video for Germany and Austria and for once although last one I decided let's pull another Bundesliga jersey on the background still more or less from the Bundesliga jersey review except for this part which I put more again all Lask and yeah there are the two national team jerseys but yeah, hey the international break is coming up so I decided yeah let's keep that part that way boy it was a good round in Germany I have to say uh, many 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 interesting results and many actually quite interesting games uh, to be had I mean the, you had the top game between uh, Dortmund and Bayern but you also had on the bottom the two winless teams Mainz and Schalke play against each other and yeah I'm wearing Hertha because Hertha finally won and I said it in my Bundesliga jersey review which you have already the first part out this is probably my favorite of the Bundesliga jerseys that I have so far. Enough talking of me, let's go right to the action. Bremen and Köln played on Friday a very boring 1-1 draw. Uh, Hertha, rather uh, surprising, 3-0 win over Augsburg, where uh, I think Kunja penalty set them on the way. And then when Luke Bakker after half made, made it 2-0, uh, that game was only going one way, to be honest. I have to say, Mainz Schalke was a pretty big game where, as we said, I thought from all I could see that Schalke was largely the better team and probably would have deserved uh, the win, especially if Ut would have been a little bit more clinically. Yes, Mainz took twice the lead, uh, both times to a penalty, Brozinski and uh, Mateta, uh, the one very early in the game, the other one uh, very late. But in between those two penalties, Schalke was dominating the game and only got a goal. They even had then a goal through Kabak for a handball in the build-up uh, disallowed. And it's very, very, very late as Jean Just uh, gives Schalke the equalizer with an own goal. Uh, not the main. But, you know, uh, Schalke thoroughly deserved the point, probably even more. But yeah, this was a pretty huge match for the two of them. Leipzig Freie, Freiburg, I think, was all Leipzig going forward and winning that one. Um, the most notable thing are the horrible Leipzig jerseys in there. And yes, they will also show up in the uh, jersey review. So 3-0 win for Leipzig there. Uh, Stuttgart had a very uh, comfortable 2-0 lead at the halftime over Frankfurt and looked well on the way to get another win. Um, but then uh, Silva pulls one back in the 61st and the game is kind of back and forth. And then Abraham uh, heads it in, I think, for in the 75th to make it 2-2. Uh, again, this is a typical game for Frankfurt. Uh, I think Frankfurt has the chance to maybe move up there, but they need to get more, more wins and it's all a little bit so-and-so. Uh, really surprising win was only Union's 5-0 over Bielefeld. It was in every bit of 5-0 as you could imagine. And then everything was set for the big one. And to first things first, it was a great game. It was an entertaining game. And while the result was what probably everyone expected, there was not much between those two teams. Uh, there was really, they were meeting level. The problem is one team makes the goals, the other one doesn't. Um, one team is star studded, the other one is star studded, but stars in five years from now, in, in a way. So, those are the big differences. I really thought that Dortmund had the chance, but you could see Bayern does what Bayern does the best. I mean, it started out really well for, for, for Bayern that um, tried to go full throttle onto Dortmund. Um, I think had him a, a big chance in the first minute where uh, Lewandowski stole the ball from Gnabry, who probably would have had, had a better chance. Lewandowski had a goal disallowed uh, midway through the first half. Uh, but that is when then Dortmund came in. Uh, and you could see it already, I think it was before that this did, it's like when Haaland had a pretty good chance that might have been offside. Who knows? Uh, I think one change was when Kimmich wanted to tackle Haaland in a build-up to a, another good chance where you, you know, a good opportunity where if you played a little bit, uh, you know, either quicker, more precise, you could have done something there, but Kimmich has to come off uh, with a knee injury. Didn't look there all that 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 good, and everything seems going for a nil nil at the half. But Dortmund had other ideas. Uh, the um, the ball, I think Sancho and Guerrero, who sees uh, Royce free in the back, 
and uh, Bogorovic puts it in the 45th minute and I think, whoa, the game on, we have now a great game, but it wouldn't be Bayern if they just had one last punch and deep into stoppage time, they get a free kick uh, that Alaba with the help of Meunier, who uh, deflected with, with the back cone, converts and 1-1. One, one. And I think this, right at this point, the game changed because Dortmund thought, yeah, we're going with the lead into halftime. And at this point, Bayern said, no, we're not done yet. And yes, it was Al Al Alaba with all the contract disputes that makes a huge difference. Um, and then the second half star starts out with Hernandez cross that Le Lewandowski, I mean, he twists himself to get that header. I mean, that was a great header uh, over Hummels and made it 2-1 and that shocked Dortmund a tool to the core. There was, um, uh, who hit the post? I think I was, I, I was a Coco Man took a shot that hit the post. At that point, Dortmund really looked uh, to be on the, on the rose, but they got themselves back again. Um, and I have, have to say it was Reus who then in the end kind of, um, yeah, uh, missed chances that you got, got, got to make. I mean, he had a huge chance to make it 2-2. Uh, um, then on a count, counter-attack, Sané, and it was Lewandowski's right hand, has a ball, sees Sané on the side, and, 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 and I'm thinking, yeah, this is going to be a goal. And yes, it was a goal. It was so predictable. It was almost Arjen Rom like uh, He comes, cuts in, left, and then makes the shot. Uh, and at the 80th minute, 3-1, you think, yeah, this game is decided. But hold on, three minutes later, I've had a wonderful pass by Guerrero again. Um, converts to make it 2-3. Two, uh, two, and then Dortmund actually went for it. Um, but Royce misses another sitter. I think Marco Roy. I, I know Holland after the game was very disappointed with his performance. I think if someone has to be really disappointed, it's uh, actually Royce. Yes, he, he, he made a goal, but he probably should have made two at least. Lewandowski has a goal of uh, disallowed late. So yeah, that was... Um, I think it was fair that the game only ended 2-3. Uh, I think a draw was well in that game. And it was, as I said, a great game to watch. Uh, up and down action, great passes, great goals. Uh, really a game worth the hype. And a great, uh, you know, promotion for German soccer overall. Um, great promotion. I have to say, I only saw how I, I followed a little bit. The Sunday games were also great promotion for Ger for German so soccer. I mean, Wolfsburg Hoffheim, after 26 minutes, when Weichos made it 2 0, you thought the game is done and dusted. And Weichos then even gets a penalty in the second half, uh, but misses in the 82nd minute. Uh, Wolfsburg firmly in control at the point, but they don't make the 3 uh, three nil. And then a few minutes later, uh, Damayan. Um, where you know the the Wolfsburg defender completely gets lost, makes it 2-1 and sets up a really crazy finish. Before that, I have to mention that the Vegas penalty, I think, was the first in over 30 penalties missed in the Bundesliga. It was not the only one, because uh in Hoffenheim's push for go for an equalizer, uh Handball in the box, uh, you know, the goalie of all was going for and he kind of pushes the ball into uh, the hand into the ball in a way. And so it's a penalty. The Boer steps up and Castile saves that one as well. So two missed penalties in a row there and actually set up, um, and you will see them in my uh, further uh, uh, review videos, a crazy streak. I think I did not, I only saw a single penalty converted uh, yesterday. Crazy stuff. So yeah, two missed penalties and Wolfsburg finally gets a win, but Glasner not happy with the transfer policy and you know, he's former last coach, not uh, a little bit in the hot seat. And then Leverkusen Gladbach, I wish I would have watched that, but I knew this, this is a game to watch, but um, you know, already Leipzig Gladbach, uh, Gladbach Leipzig was a little bit disappointed. And then as uh, City against Liverpool at the same, same, same time, which I at the moment consider the new Classico. And there was no way that I could watch them in par parallel. But boy, was that a game. Uh, up and down, very open action. Uh, seven goals. And what goals were in there? I mean, uh, the Stindl penalty, okay, that was right. And Alario gives them the e e equalizer. And then um, a really crazy goal where Stindl is clearly offside, but the ball comes from the opponent, so it counts. And then uh, Gladbach 
has more of the game, should maybe have made it 3-1, um, but Alario gets an equalizer after Wirtz assist. Uh, in the second half, again, Gladbach coming out storming and Wolf missing a sitter. Uh, there were two or three mo moments where, where Gladbach could, 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 could score, but what Wolf, he needs to put that in. And then when Leon Bailey makes it 3-2, uh, he kind of takes out the wind out of Gladbach. Uh, Baumgartlinger makes it 4-2 and you think it's all done and dusted, but then goal of the season, very late though, in the 90th minute, through Lazaro, who Scorpion kicks it in, uh, if you have not seen the goal, that goal, goal of the season, quite easily, in Germany at least, but I think so far, best goal that I've seen, um, so yeah, another absolutely amazing game, so I think this was, this Bundesliga round was probably the best round of all the different leagues that I've seen and uh, we'll talk about all the others too, but I think the Bundesliga had the most action there. Which sets up the table where Bayern now sits on top, however, not three points clear, but only two points clear because Leipzig could uh, leapfrog um, Dortmund. Leverkusen goes back, Union Berlin makes a huge uh, jump as well. Uh, still at the moment the number one Berlin team, Wolfsburg also going up with Gladbach suddenly only in seventh. Um, um, what else can, can we say? Yeah, on the bottom everything stays more or less the same. I, I'm curious if Hertha uh, will remain the way they are. We still have two unbeaten teams, Leverkusen and Wolfsburg, and we have three teams that have not won this season yet. That's Köln, Schalke and Mainz. Uh, Bielefeld now still looking also on favorites uh, together with Schalke and Mainz to get uh, relegated, but I have to say Köln, there will be a coaching change coming soon, I am afraid. And if you look on top yeah, with that win, uh, Le Leverkusen is now ahead of Gladbach and let's see if Union or Wolfsburg or Frankfurt, Hoffenheim have a chance to get in there. Still early in the season, I said it before, but you know. 7 out of 34 have been played. Uh, the next round is after the international break. Um, from the names, I mean, Bayern Werder sounds to me like this is a top duel, but it's not really. Uh, so, yeah, a Hertha Dortmund sounds good. Frankfurt, Leib Leipzig, I think those are all in this round. Um, Slipper Schalke, Wolfsburg, because one team has not won, the other one has had, has not lost, I and mean, it's headed for a draw. I would think. That, that was actually when I thought about Mainz again, I guess, like, yeah, both teams have, they have not won yet. Yeah, that will end in a draw. So, yeah, let's move to Austria, where uh, the first big news is that Wolfsburg has so many COVID cases, and even Sturm has a few, that the game had to be postponed. Uh, how this will uh, affect the, the schedule, we will see. But I think there is some space in Austria to actually play that game. But, you know, winter is coming and Wolfsburg is up way up in the mountains. Well, way up in the mountains, but that's one of those grounds where it's a little bit harder to get a game going. Lusk, very easy. I mean, you know, Admira soundly, defensively, and so on, but um, typically last goal, Michael Corner, Trauner, Header, 1 0. Not that there were many chances, uh, but I think they, they played well. When Eggestein uh, in the second half makes it after Ramftl assist 2 uh, 0, the game was done and dusted, and then um, Ramftl scorcher into the uh, corner, upper corner, and Grigic at the fourth one. It could have been more, but you know, they just went for for nil, and it was a very easy win for Lask. And then there was the, uh, if you want to say, the Austrian Classico between Rapid and Salzburg, um, which was actually a good game from all that I could tell. Uh, Rapid tried to really stifle Salzburg by standing um, deep not giving them much space, uh, but Koita makes it 1-0 in the 29th. Uh, from that moment on, then Salzburg really was the better team in the second half, had many chances to uh, widen the lead. Um, but, you know, with um, around the 60th, then um, Rapid actually fought themselves back into the game and got, some might say, a deserved equalizer through Knaas Müller on a counter-attack and it ends 1-1, Salzburg losing points for the first time. Um, I have mixed feelings about that, that result. I mean, uh, it's good that Salzburg is no, 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 no pulling away, so now Lask, for instance, is within three points of Salzburg and Rapid is also, so it's very tight. Um, on the other side, if Salzburg would have won, then um, Lask would have gone ahead of Rapid. 
think uh, it's probably the better result that this is a draw, although I really would have wanted that Rapid gets a uh, spanking. But I knew against Salzburg they will play well enough because that's their game, they are a counter-attacking team. Whereas if they play against small opponents, yeah, that's where they uh, usually hurt. And they have played actually most of the big opponents already. Um, so yeah, we have to see how, how they will do against the small ones. Last now in third place. And yes, it is also due to the game being postponed, but you can see the top three already separating themselves quite seriously from the rest. Um, I have a feeling that it, St. Burton might not make it in there, that Austria Wien will make it in there, but uh, all to be seen. Next round also uh, has been already the dates given. There's not really an outstanding match, maybe Salzburg against Sturm. Um, I'm curious, it's curious to me that Rapid is playing on Sunday when all the other European teams are playing on Saturday already, but I guess that's a game they wanted to have in TV. Rapid always draws a lot of um, spectators. And yeah, I also heard that Salzburg again has COVID cases and uh, exactly ahead of the international break, so, so they don't, don't give putting any uh, players into the national team and I find this rather, let's say it curious, I think they're cheating. They don't want to have the players there because they have so many. Anyway, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about uh, the games in, Ger in Austria and Germany uh, over the weekend. Um, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And yeah, I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell icon as it will remind you whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.